The book of Ezra ends with uh, a chapter and a theme that I think many of us probably find difficult, and it is the issue of mixed marriages. One of the things that we see in Ezra chapter 9 is having spent time in Babylon, having spent time among very different peoples, that there were obviously a lot of marriages that took place, and this included the priests, the Levites, and the chief officials. And yet the time in Babylon was part of a development of a sense of exclusiveness among the Jewish people, and feeling like we have to protect our uniqueness or else it's simply going to end up disappearing. And so the older codes that we have in our Bible didn't specifically discourage intermarriages, interfaith, interreligious um, marriages, but the experience during the exile was now turning things. And in the end of the book of Ezra, we see these heart-rending, heartbreaking scenes where the people are told, you need to send your foreign spouses away because you can't be married to them anymore. And this is very painful just from a human, empathetic, sympathetic uh, a sense of family. Um, is this really what God was asking them to do? And you may recall that uh, the book of Ezra is really a, quite a contrast to the book of Ruth, where we talked about how Ruth, a Moabitess, uh, ends up being married to Boaz, and she ends up being in not only King David, but Jesus' family tree. And so as we study the Bible, one of the things we have to look at is what is going on in a particular historical period, and how is that shaping people's faith and understanding of faith and what they think God may be telling them to do. In the New Testament, Paul kind of following a little bit from Ezra, uh, not quite to this extent. Um, he, he teaches that you know, Christians should not be unevenly yoked with non-believers. And the principle in both these cases, both in the book of Ezra and what Paul is speaking to, is because if you're married to someone who shares your faith, then you have a sense in which that relationship can be mutually reinforcing. It's like when I do premarital counseling with a couple, I often tell them that uh, there are bad love triangles. They tend to involve another person, and they almost always end in heartbreak and heartache. But there's a good love triangle where you have the two spouses at the bottom corner and Jesus at the top. And if I'm growing and seeking to grow towards Christ-likeness, and my spouse is growing towards Christ-likeness, not only are we growing and becoming more like Jesus, but we're growing closer together at the same time. And I think ideally, that's what God is looking for. That we, if we are married, that we are both pursuing our growth in faith and encouraging our spouse to do so as well. I pray that God would continue to encourage you as we finish the book of Ezra and as we turn the page, so to speak, next week, to Nehemiah.